Uh, Frank Reich did not rule out adding pieces to the roster. And that means, I, you know, sometimes you have to think of what someone's saying. Sometimes you have to think of why they're saying it. Okay? Ready? <laughs> I can't get this, this uh, story from today out of my mind, so here we go. I had my... Uh, my super the the intense uh, orientation to the new company here, which feels kind of crazy because I've been working here uh, now for over a month. Mm-hmm. But uh, had my super intense orientation, and that means you get all the new employees into a room, and HR gives you this the, every spiel you could possibly have, right? Of course. And uh, one of them was about um, the insurances, right? Health, uh, uh, dental, vision, right? Anything else? This H A, that S A, F A, whatever. So uh, I'm sitting there, I'm watching, and and they're doing, as most presentations do, stopping every once in a while and saying, uh, any questions? So we're in the middle of the vision section, and uh, they're talking about hardware is what they call like frames and lenses, right? Mm-hmm. Like you know, this much for, if you, if you, this plan gives you this much for hardware and, and a guy, and I, I won't say his name or, you know, his department or anything, but he raises his hand. And they're like, oh, question. He's, he said, does this support cyborg eyes? This is, this is a room full of adults. And he hits them with, did, like, does this support cyborg eyes? Well, does it? Because if it does, I might change my plan. <laughs> there was a full-out pause where neither HR nor anyone, nor anyone else in the room knew if he was joking or not, knew if there was – it was like – uh, what? And and then eventually he kind of giggled, and we were like, "Oh, okay, he's making a joke." And you know, we got back to the presentation. Uh, and I was like, "All right, that's that's strange." Like it was very in- serious and kind of dry meeting, right? You're just going over this plan and this price and this plan and this price and this company policy that you have to follow, and you have to sign up for this. But very, and then he just threw in a weird cyborg eyes joke in the middle of it. Why not? Come to find out, he has like seven kids. And I'm like, oh, this guy makes cyborg eyes jokes. That makes that tracks, right? He's he's got a, a bunch of kids running around, right? And they're watching the cartoons and the comic books, and it makes sense. And you're like, that's why he's saying it. So so I, I and it kind of all makes sense, right? It's like, all right, you know, if you start singing, you know, if you're happy, clap your hands. It's like, okay, now I know why that's your favorite song because you you've got a whole bunch of uh, little ones running around. Uh, so Frank Reich says to the media that they could play winning football with the roster as it stands now, but he would not rule out their, their general manager, Scott Fitterer adding pieces. If there's a need now that could just be Frank Reich is putting it out there, right? That could just be Frank Reich saying, Hey, uh, you know, if we need an edge rusher, if somebody gets hurt, we, we can go get someone filled in. But I also like to think about why he's saying that. Right, It's not just what he said. It's why he's saying that. I'm going to try to connect the dots here a little bit. I think the Panthers are debating if they want to get greedy. I think that the Panthers are having conversations, right? Because even the conversations you have behind closed doors, they're you know on top of mind when you're having questions to, with the media, when you're having conversations with the media. Uh, I think they're debating if they can go further than any of us are really giving them credit for. Right, they they can play winning football now, is what he says. They can win the division. That's me talking. Right, they're in a bad division with a lot of uncertainty around them. Uh, right, the Bucks still have an or starting at quarterback, Baker Mayfield or Kyle Trask. Mm-hmm. The the Saints are are auditioning running backs that are then running out of town to go uh, work out with the Colts. There's <sighs> there's there's the Falcons with Desmond Ritter. You know, there's so many questions. They can win the division. I'm not saying they will they can they've added a few pieces on the defense Deion Jones Justin Houston they've they've gotten a look at Bryce Young leading the team for a couple of weeks now right maybe they're starting to like what they see maybe they're going wait a second do they think they can win something above the division is that the hey don't be surprised if he goes and gets a few more pieces that's saying if we're thinking of chasing something beyond wild card weekend, you know, we, we might have to go get some pieces. We didn't think about that in the offseason because we didn't think we'd be in this position, but we're liking what we see, so don't be surprised. So I could see something along the lines of, all right, you have Thielen, Chark, mm. Chanel, 
Mingo, Marshall. Well, then there's still like Demir Bird and Shai Smith. Uh, Bird, you, I, I, uh, I know Bird. I think has an injury. That yeah, that, that lasts for hammy. a while. Yep. So okay, maybe you move a guy like Shai Smith. If there's someone else that you think is can be a number six receiver to get a depth corner. Or for example, you look at depth on the interior of the offensive line. Cade Mays is starting right now for Austin Corbett, recovering from the ACL. How long is his – like, what's his prognosis for mm-hmm. return? We're not entirely sure. Chandler Zavala drafted out of NC State. He's dealing with the pectoral. Mm-hmm. So now your interior line depth is actually kind of thin. So, okay, do you go add a piece to provide depth there? Maybe those are the pieces that they're looking at. They, they, they could look at something like that if they if – they... Look at maybe their running back position and don't like the depth, especially little tweaks here and there to a couple guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, do they go Leonard Fournette? Right there's Zeke Elliott's floating around. Out if, there. if they're dirt cheap, right? Because the the, yeah. the running back market is is bottomed out. Like there are options out there, but to me, you don't do that. Right? If you think your current roster can already win the division, and I think their current roster can already win the division. But uh, it didn't like it wouldn't take much for them to let their imaginations run wild, right? Wouldn't take much for them to let their greed get a hold of them, start talking themselves into it. Like, whoa, Justin Houston looks pretty good. That was a that was a good pickup there, Scott. You see what I'm doing with Bryce? Bryce is looking pretty good, right? We're developing him. He's he's owning the 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 offense. You, you see what? Oh, look at this. We might be a little better than we thought, right? Instead of being ten moves from having a chance to win a playoff game. <laughs> Someone just say win a playoff game? Yeah. Now, again, I don't know if they're there, okay? I'm very confident saying they can win the division. I'm, I'm not to the point where I'm throwing playoff wins out there yet, but I think that's maybe been a conversation they have, right? I think that's maybe something they have going on internally that now it's it's just squeaking out into the, the public sphere a little bit. Because, you know, like Justin Houston showing up, I, I love the move, and I've talked about it, right? And I think it's good for Brian Burns. I think it's good for Brian Burns' production, his development, in a bunch of different ways. But at the same time, if you were planning on not being great this year, you'd probably want Amari Barno out there, right? You'd probably want DJ Johnson out there. You'd probably want to see what they have and see what they are and give them those reps to develop. So the, if they're moving into like a, hey, we might not be as much of a win three or four years from now team. We might be a little bit of a win now or next year team. Then, yeah, don't be surprised if Scott Fritter goes out there and makes some moves. Don't be surprised if we move a fourth-round pick next year for somebody that can contribute this year, right? That Those types of things I didn't think would be smart. And I, and I, as of right now, not knowing what they know, like I haven't seen every practice. I don't get to watch the film. I don't know what they're being asked to do. I probably still wouldn't think that's smart. But with their knowledge being obviously more intimate with the team than mine, maybe they're coming around to the idea. And they only have six draft picks next year because of a lot of the picks that they moved to trade up to get Bryce Young. They don't have a first-round pick. Yeah, they have second, third, fourth, I think like two-fifths and a six, something along those lines. So there's a little bit of a premium on those. Exactly. So it's like, all right, do you want to have a second straight year of just drafting five guys if you move one of these picks this upcoming draft? Like, do you want to have that again? I don't know if that's such a good thing long term. That's where you get into the conditional picks. Yes, exactly. Yes, you got to love a good conditional I, pick. I, I love – we're giving them a seventh. As long as the guy we trade for doesn't play 80% of the snaps, then the, the seventh is in 2029. I know, you can't, <laughs> I know you can't do that, but still.